Good morning, everybody, and welcome, and welcome particularly to Kate, who says that this is the first time she's preached at Mat in Matlock, but um, unfortunately it's all on the screen, but there we are. Um, I only have one notice, which is that we will meet for prayer as usual on a Wednesday evening on Zoom at eight, eight o'clock, and please do join. And now shall we pray. Dear Lord, as we continue to live through these strange times, filled with all sorts of fears and concerns and restrictions, Lord, we want you to fill us with the freedom of your kingdom. Warm our hearts, speak through Kate, and please encourage us to rest in the safety and security of your love. In Jesus' name. Amen. Over to Kate. Thank you. Thank you, Penny. Um, well, first of all, I think uh, probably as it's the first time I'm with you, I feel like I need to introduce myself, which is a little bit odd. Um, it's nearly, uh, I'm halfway through my third year of appointment here, but I'm looking at the screen and seeing lots of faces that I've never seen before. So I'm guessing that you're probably also looking at my face and, and realizing that you haven't seen my face either, perhaps. So just as a word of introduction, um, I'm Reverend Kate Strange, um, and I'm sitting next to this uh, young man here, uh, who is my husband, Paul, and I think you probably do know him very well. Um, I am um, a minister in the Ripley section. I have six churches there, but I'm also deputy chair of the district, uh, which I've been doing now for 12 months. Um, and uh, we have been uh, doing um, online services uh, for the my section because we don't have the facility to do uh, Zoom services um, since lockdown started. Um, we've been doing them together. Um, which is why we're here this morning together. Um, it's, I find it quite difficult to just preach at a screen. Uh, so we uh, decided for my section um, to do um, Facebook services um, right at the beginning in March. Uh, and we found that preaching together was a more interactive way that we could uh, make the gospel come alive. And we've been doing that. What we realise now is coming up for 12 months uh, every Sunday. Uh, and that's that's worked for us. So uh, I hope that works for you this morning. Um, it's, uh, it, it's, it's worked for us anyway, rather than every time I record, it seems to be a bit, bit uh, stifled and a bit um, not really the way that I like to try and bring the gospel alive so um paul's agreed to come and do this we've done one service this morning already at nine o'clock uh, so this is our second this morning um so i'm thanking paul but you will be used to him um yeah um and that's it between us as you will know i arrived three years ago met paul and very quickly we got married uh, because he swept me off my feet uh, between us we have eight grandchildren uh, which keep us busy and a whole host of uh, animals so that's a little bit about me and in the chat rooms I might find uh, afterwards a little bit about yourselves as well I sit on uh, uh, quite a few connectional um, meetings which we'll talk about a little bit uh, during the reflection as the service goes on um, we've had a prayer to start our worship uh, so let's go into our first hymn which is Lord I come to you Thank you, Father, that this morning, even though we are not gathered together physically, but we are gathered together spiritually with you. Lord, using technology today to be able to come and worship together, to acknowledge that you are Lord and Father, to acknowledge that you are our King above all kings. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for all that you have done for us. Thank you for all that you continue to do for us as you make sure that we are safe and looking after us, Lord. Lord, we come before you knowing that there are times where we have failed you. There are times where we have not done what you've asked us to do or done things that we haven't realised that have upset you, Lord. And we come before you, Lord, and ask for your forgiveness. Ask, Lord, that you will cleanse us. You will wash us anew. You will 
make us into the beings that you want us to be. So this morning, as we worship your name, as we look to you, Lord, we pray that you will come and touch each and every life that is here this morning. Lord, that you will bless each and every person. You will fill everyone afresh with the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord. The Holy Spirit that gives us life. The Holy Spirit that shows us the spirit of love, the, the spirit of kindness, the spirit of willingness to be able to go that extra mile, to be able to do the things that you have asked us and encouraged us to do. So, Lord, give us that strength, Lord. Give us that power. Help us to understand the authority that you have given to us to be able to speak in your name, to be able to do your will. Thank you, Lord, that you are the creator of all things, the king of all, and yet you are our father. You know each and every one of us. You know every part of us. Thank you, Father, that you care for us so much, that you sent Jesus, Jesus, to be our saviour, to be the one we can look to, to turn to, to see our salvation through his life on the cross that was lost, when he rose again, though to show that we are saved. So, Lord, as we think of you, we put you in the centre of all that we do this morning. We put you right in your rightful place. Remembering, Lord, that we need to concentrate on you. We need to remember daily to be and to try and be more like Christ. So help us in all those things, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can we say together the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive others who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. We'll do the readings next. So we have, we've got Mark's Gospel, uh, which is Mark 1, 29 to 31. And then we're having the Psalm 147. Thank you. Right, the reading is Mark 1, verses 29 to 39. Jesus heals many people. Jesus and his disciples, including James and John, left the synagogue and went straight to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was sick in bed with a fever, and as soon as Jesus arrived, he was told about her. He went to her, took her by the hand and helped her up. The fever left her, and she began to wait on them. After the sun had set and the evening had come, people brought to Jesus all the sick and those who had demons. All the people of the town gathered in front of the house. Jesus healed many who were sick with all kinds of diseases, and drove out many demons. He would not let the demons say anything because they knew who he was. Jesus preaches in Galilee. Very early the next morning, long before daylight, Jesus got up and left the house. He went to the town, went out of town to a lonely place where he prayed. But Simon and his companions went out searching for him. And when they found him, they said, everyone is looking for you. But Jesus answered, we must go on to the other villages around here. I have to preach in them also, because that is why I came. So he traveled all over Galilee, preaching in the synagogues and driving out demons. Thanks be to God. Psalm 147, which is a psalm of praise. Praise the Lord. It is good to sing praise to our God. It is pleasant and right to praise him. The Lord is restoring Jerusalem. He's bringing back the exiles. 
he heals the broken-hearted and bandages their wounds. He has decided the number of stars and calls each one by name. Great and mighty is our Lord. His wisdom cannot be measured. He raises the humble, but crushes the wicked to the ground. Sing hymns of praise to the Lord. Play music on the harp to our God. He spreads the clouds over the sky. He provides rain for the earth and makes grass grow on the hills. He gives animals their food and feeds the young ravens when they call. His pleasure is not in strong horses, nor his delight in brave soldiers, but he takes pleasure in those who honour him, in those who trust in his constant love. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. He keeps your gates strong. He blesses your people. He keeps your borders safe and satisfies you with finest wheat. He gives a command to the earth and what he says is quickly done. He spreads snow like a blanket and scatters frost like dust. He sends hail like gravel. No one can endure the cold he sends. And then he gives a command and the ice melts. He sends the wind and the water flows. He gives his message to his people, his instructions and laws to Israel. He has not done this for other nations. They do not know his laws. Praise the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you both. Thinking about that psalm, that psalm of praise, we sing uh, hymn number 89, which is strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. So um, the gospel reading today in the lectionary was really exciting for me when I read it was this uh, choice because um, it's got so many rich threads to it. Um, it's got four main themes which I would like to talk about today. And the four themes are, it starts off with uh, a healing theme that we see um, when Jesus leaves the synagogue. Uh, they go with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew and Jesus heals Simon's mother-in-law. But then quite quickly they move on and there is Jesus uh, removes a a demon there's a demon uh i'm looking casting out casting out of a demon <laughs> i've got straight out of my head done. yeah and then there is importance of praying a uh, theme running through the middle and there is the proclamation of the gospel uh, at the end so we've got four rich three themes running through this one quite short um a piece of word here today which i want to talk about so to start off with, I want to talk about healing um, and we have this uh, healing in uh, Simon's mother-in-law. Uh, she's in bed with a fever. Jesus goes in, he takes her hand up and we see this in uh, verse 31 um, of Mark. And he helps her up and straight away she begins to work, uh, go back to work. Um, and we see here Jesus's healing ministry. Uh, and one of the things that um, fascinates me about healing ministry is um, I had a sabbatical now in 2019 uh, and I focused on the healing stories in the Gospels. I um, only looked at uh, where Jesus um, healed, where he did either healings of one or two people, so not the mass healing stories, uh, just the one or two. And... Um, I was, I was saying earlier to you, wasn't I, that um, I took three months out. I went to Iona and I went and looked at the Iona healing service, which I'd gone to, well, I've done several times before, but the first time I'd done that was 20 years previously. And it had a profound um, 
effect on me. And for the, the previous 20 years, I'd held Iona service, healing services, and I'd wanted to revisit that and spend some time uh, on Iona, which I'd done. And the rest of the three months I'd spent just studying the healing stories. Um, and I'd, I'd put a great big graph up on the wall um, and I got all the stories out um, and I cross-referenced them. Um, I was looking for, did Jesus heal men? Had he healed women? Had he healed children? What words did he use? So I wrote all the words out. Um, had he used touch? Had he used prayer? Was he present? Um, then, because uh, sometimes he spat on claim, put them on his eyes. You'll remember those stories. Sometimes he touched. Uh, sometimes he raised from the dead. Sometimes he just said, go home and it's, it's done. Um, and I was trying to look for any sort of um, areas where there was... Um, where there was what am I looking for? Cross reference. Cross references. You know. You know. Did he use sin a lot? Did he use um, your faith has healed you? Use that. Did he use that more than he used anything else? You know. And because it was an interest to me, you know, when we look at liturgies, and I was trying to tie that in with the Iona um, um, healing service. When we look at a liturgy for healing, what words are we using? Why are we using those words? And are the words that we're using important? And when I presented my sabbatical report at the end of the three months, the only conclusion that I could come to was, no, there wasn't any similarities because Jesus, what he did was when he came in front of a person, he just saw that person as they were unique, beautiful, individual person. And he dealt with the person in that time and in that space. He didn't have a set pattern. He didn't get out a book and say, right, this is what I do for healing. So it's A, B, C and D. He saw the person, he listened to their story, he understood their needs and he dealt with them at that moment for what they needed. And it taught me a lot about ministry and about what we need to do. And as I move forward in my own healing ministry, which I believed I had, uh, was one of the gifts that I was given about how we use prayer, how we use language um, and how we use liturgy um, and, and the Great Commission to, to go out, preach, teach, uh, cast mm. out demons um, is really interesting uh, how we move forward into that about teaching us to look at the person um, and not teach we're not all the same that everybody comes with their own story with their own individual needs um, and and how we pray for people uh, in in a language that comes from the heart which um i don't know if you want to add to that well no the, the only bit that I, uh, that I said that, that really stood out was the immediateness that you know it was yeah. instantaneous it was, yeah. that this particular healing where uh, to, for Simon's mother-in-law yeah. where that um, Jesus spoke it through and it was so instantaneous that she had to go straight back to work yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there was no recuperation or no time to uh, to, to get over her illness yeah. there was no need bang healed done and straight back in it and and so uh, jesus knowing all that each person needs and their entirety that it was complete um a total uh, complete healing and and how great it, it it is or it it would be to see more of that kind of supernatural healing today yeah i mean during the week when we've been doing um couple with kate um in the afternoons i gave a testimony last week about uh, a particular occasion up at Cliff College and I think I may have given the testimony uh, when preaching down at, at Matlock Church before where at Cliff College we prayed for a, a person Brad in, in an ambulance and there was an instantaneous healing mm. it was just instant God healed him straight away there was no it'll slowly get better or go away and think about it instantaneous supernatural healing and how great that is to see the power of God moving in that way mm. I think the second um, stream that runs through this is that then um, that evening after sunset, when we move to verse 32, it says that evening after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon possessed. Now, as a chaplain, I worked for seven years with the mental uh, people with mental health challenges. And what makes me quite sad is that we seem to be moving into a culture where we want to seem to 
to move from the word which says that people are demon possessed oh that's mental illness uh, and for some reason we want to just brush it under the carpet and think that demon possession doesn't exist and that it's mental illness um, and that isn't the case um, demon possession exists uh, I'm working on a, a team at Connection now, which is working on the liturgy um, and the understanding and the training to do exorcism safely. Deliverance ministry. Deliverance ministry. Yeah. Because it has done, if you look at our Catholic brothers and sisters and our Anglican brothers and sisters, there is a strong ministry which already exists. And the Methodist Church are now making sure that we exercise that ministry appropriately for exorcism because demons exist but we feel really uncomfortable about it and what we want to do is pretend it doesn't yeah, we don't like talking about it do we, we don't like talking about it and so what we do is we try and say oh well it's just mental health it's not mental health exists and demons exist sometimes we confuse the two okay, yeah. that's for sure absolutely uh, and it's not clear but jesus quite clearly in the text says jesus uh, heals the sick and the demon possessed and it's like how it's just in the same sentence i mean we try we almost make it to be oh, a bit scary demon possessed you know we, we almost try and make it bigger than it is jesus just puts it in the same sentence you know here yeah. it's just the same sentence the sick were healed and the demons were cast out and when the Great Commission comes from Jesus, the Great Commission says, go out into the world, heal the sick, cast out demons, demons yeah. just in one sentence. Yeah. Not a special, oh, we specially want to go and talk to you guys and teach you and train you how to cast out demons. No, if you can heal the sick, you can cast out demons. And we, we just, we want to kind of brush that under the carpet these days. We want to put it to one side and don't talk about it. And unfortunately, because as a, as a church and as preachers even, we've never, we don't like to even go into the realms of talking about this, no. that, that unfortunately a lot's not said. So a lot of people are scared of it or, or just want to forget it or ignore it. Yeah. And that's when the danger comes in. It is. And I think, I think people are uncomfortable about things and we've got into a culture of if things are uncomfortable, let's not talk about it. But we only have to look at the past cases review to see that the trouble that we've got into about when we don't talk about things that make us uncomfortable. And I think it becomes very difficult when we see young, well, not even just young people, but when young people want to dabble in the occult and Ouija boards and things like that. And when we say you we shouldn't be dealing with that because and then we say, well, demons don't exist. I think we come to very, very dangerous territory mm -hmm. if we if we're saying one thing and not another. Well, because the Bible warns us against it. Yes. Throughout the Bible, it tells us that the devil is an angel of light. He comes to deceive. Yeah. He, he is a deceiver. Yeah. And the, the best way he can deceive anybody is, is to make them believe that he doesn't exist. Yeah. And so he can carry on and do what he wants to do without intervention of any Christians because he's managed to cause deception and we'd rather not talk about it and push it under the carpet yeah. so therefore we're not talking about it we're not teaching on it we're not encouraging people to understand it so things are happening then because in a, in a way of ignorance yeah uh, and and therefore the devil can get away with what he wants to do yeah and if you think about in in the wider context about things that have happened because we've ignored it um, that then becomes very, very frightening indeed. And, and on one of the committees I've sat, there have been people that have said, oh, it makes people uncomfortable. Can we use a different word? <laughs> and there have been other people that said, because it makes people uncomfortable is the reason that we need to talk about it. Because there have been other situations in safeguarding for years that people have ignored um, and because it's made them uncomfortable and there have been terrible atrocities that have happened. So I think that we need to be brave enough to be just because we don't see it every day. There are other countries that see it every day in Africa and other other places. And I think that, you know, and I know the preachers that will say, well, I won't preach on that because it's too awkward. And I think I think there needs to be a bravery mm. that says it, it's in the text. Um, you you can't keep making excuses and saying, oh, well, you know, um, oh, well, that's different times now. Mm, well, that's not strictly true. We just need to understand The Catholic it. Church are dealing with it. The Anglican Church are dealing with it. The Methodist Church are now dealing with it. Um, so that isn't strictly true. I think we need to be brave um, and, and to accept that it is happening. Um, if it makes you feel uncomfortable, 
I'm sorry about that, but actually you, there is a bravery required because otherwise other, other things happen. And then the third thing is to say that, and you could, you could lose this if, if around the other, the other big stuff that's happening in the text. And that is that in verse 35, it says very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. And during all of this ministry, all of this giving out, Jesus still finds time to go and be close to his father. He still finds time to draw close to God. And I think that's really important that during our, um, our, whether any of you, I know um, some of you have drawn, uh, gone into the afternoon things that I do with my mother-in-law. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's so important, and we've been talking about Holy Spirit this week, that we, if you're giving out in whatever ministry you're doing, whether you're blessing people, whether you're doing pastoral care, you're ringing on the phone. I know lots of people are doing some really good stuff out, out uh, trying to keep people lifted during this lockdown, lock-in time. Uh, when we're all struggling, there's, nobody isn't struggling. You know, me and Paul have really difficult days as well. Um, and you, know, you pick up the phone, you try and keep people's spirits high, but you're giving out. You need to give back in. Are you drawing close to God? Are you doing personal devotions? Are you reading your Bible? Are you praying? And this here is, is a really good example. This is what Jesus is doing. He's giving out, but he's also drawing close to God. He's getting back in. He's resourcing himself. And that just that one line reminds us whatever else we're doing, draw close to God. And sometimes when we're struggling to connect to other people, struggling to connect to our church family, we need to make that extra effort to draw close to God. And then just finally, and this, this bit here is a real challenge to us as we move forward. Mm. And that is, he says, uh, and that's in, in verse 38, let us go somewhere else to the nearby villages so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. And only uh, last week I was sitting on Methodist Church Council at Connection. And I, it, it hit me because they said, what is the purpose of the Methodist Church? And somebody said, to make disciples of people and to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it, for a moment, it just hit me and I thought, is it? Because I've got so caught up in the rounds of business um, and meetings of meetings. And I'm running around in this house for meeting, 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 meeting. And it suddenly hit me in the face and I thought, yes, that's what that's what we're about. We're about making disciples and proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. And here is a crucial, crucial verse. Mm. Let us go somewhere else, not keep insular. And that's a real challenge for us because I went out to do a funeral this week and I almost had a panic attack because we stay in. We're trying to do our best, best to stay in to not go out, not to spread the virus out. So we have our shopping delivered and we, we don't do anything other than we, we have to do. But almost, I went out to do a funeral, I almost had a panic attack. And I suppose a lot of us, when we get to the point where we are allowed out and we can re-enter society, that we're going to feel a little bit like that. We're going to think, oh, do I want to go out? You know, um, and actually facing the future, you can forget the past because that's gone. We've got to look at a new future and what that might look like. And it's going to be a challenge to us to how do we go out? Where do we go out? Who are we going to see? What is our next steps forward? And how do we stop ourselves just becoming insular? I mean, we've, as a couple, how we like being on our own. We like that. <laughs> we like- We enjoy each other's company. We enjoy each other's company. So then it, it becomes a new challenge to not stay just in, in together, but to go out to the nearby villages, not stay as our little fellowships, but to push out, to proclaim the gospel, to make disciples. That is the challenge, I think. Mm. It's not about just going back to church. It's about pushing out. If you have found new sustenance through this time, new close you know, and really got to your faith has, has sustained you. How then are you, as you move forward, going to proclaim that to others mm. to give them a chance to have that same feeling? Well, Would you want to say that? Uh, I think we'll need to, we're going to move, time's moving on. So we'll, we'll, we'll just draw it to a close just to, by saying really, 
make sure that we're not keeping things to ourselves. And, and I'm not being critical here, uh, so I know we take this the wrong way. But if we're not careful, things like uh, in a lot of churches, the Zoom meetings are just so insular where what we're just worshipping amongst ourselves and we're not getting out to the world and the population around us or the people around us. And we need to find fresh and new ways to be able to invite new people in to worship, to be able to invite people in to what we're doing, into mission and how we're going to work that. And we need to find the new ways because our church buildings at the moment are irrelevant. Um, we're not a church in a building anymore. We're a church of people. people yeah. And we need to be able to be that church and still be that church out to other people and spread that word out and get that gospel message out and talk to other people in a new way. So we've got to find ways that of being challenge. able to, and that's the challenge. Yeah. Find ways of spreading the gospel and being available to anyone that's out there and needs it. Yeah, that's the challenge. And we'll sing, make me channel of your peace. So let's pray. Sovereign God, we pray for the weak and the vulnerable in our world, those who feel powerless in the face of the massive problems that confront them. We ask you to reach out to strengthen and support them. We pray for the poor, for those who are hungry this day, for those who have illnesses, for those who are struggling with COVID and other related illnesses, for those who are hiding illnesses, too afraid to go to doctors or to present themselves at hospitals. We pray for those who are dying. We pray for those who have died, for those families, who have lost loved ones. We pray for those who feel helpless. We ask you to reach out and to strengthen and support. We pray today for those who feel oppressed, for those who feel exploited, for those who are abused and tortured. We ask you to reach out and strengthen and support them. We pray today for those who are frightened, for those who are lonely and those who are hurt, for those who are feeling depressed at this situation. We pray for those who live in lands that are racked by tension, for those who face famine and starvation, for those whose pictures don't come on our television screen, where we don't see what's going on in this world, but we can only imagine. We pray for those who are unemployed and those who are homeless. We ask you to reach out and strengthen and support. And we pray for all of those situations on our own hearts today you know each and every one of us lord we ask you to comfort and to be with us sovereign god you have expressed a special concern for the bruised for those in need and for the weak of our world may that concern bring strength to all in such need and may it inspire people everywhere to work for a more just society standing up for those in need and working for that time when there will be an end to suffering, mourning and pain. That time when your kingdom will come and your will will be done. Help of the helpless, reach out to strengthen and support. In the name of Christ. Amen. And so thinking of our message today, we sing that, uh, that wonderful hymn, 418, We Have a Gospel to Proclaim. And the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon you all, on those you love and those you meet, now and forevermore. Amen. Well, thank you all for joining us for this morning's worship and we look forward to seeing you all next Sunday when it is the Reverend Helen Penfold. Thank you all. Bye.